All right, back on the workbench here, we've got the 1968 Fender Pro Reverb. This is the black line silver face, very cool amp. And uh, last video, we went through everything and kind of determined what will likely need to be replaced, what should be replaced. And um, I talked to the owner and we decided on swapping all of the filter caps outside of these ones here, uh, as these are most likely fine. So that includes the bias cap, as well as the uh, main electrolytics on the, um, in the doghouse on the other side, as well as swapping all of the resistors that need to be swapped. So we're going to go ahead and start with the bias cap here and, uh, and yeah, get going on this. So the first thing I like to do is just add some fresh solder just to make sure that everything flows okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and try and lift up the leads on this. And then we can go ahead and clean up those eyelets. Let's go ahead and grab our bias cap. All right, so we've got the bias cap reinstalled there. Hopefully you can see that. So this is an FNT, 100 microfarad, 100 volt, pretty standard practice for a bias cap. So now let's go ahead and move further down on the amp to the next thing on the list. So next up, we've got these resistors right here on the um, power tubes. This is on pin four and pin six. And uh, these should be 470 ohm, one watts. And uh, I believe we measured them to be quite a bit higher than that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Let's go ahead and grab our replacement. So I got some of these resistors here. I think these are two or three watt. Uh, they had a special name I'm blanking on, power metal, metal film or something like that. And um, we're going to go ahead and try these for this. They look quite small, but they're actually rated um, higher than, than what it, the schematic calls for. So we're going to try it. We're going to mount it kind of up and out of the way so that heat is not an issue. This should be 470 ohm, measures 463, so that's okay. Do the same on this one. And 465, okay. So let's go ahead and get these installed. Solder one end in. Get the other one in. All right, now we can go ahead and clip the leads. Perfect. So there's one, let's go ahead and do one more. So this one is looks like it's actually a 1.5K. So one of those was a 1K and the other one was 1.5K for some, some odd reason. Got a glob of solder on the back here we're gonna take care of. And getting this hooked under is gonna be tricky, but I can do it. There we go. Just like before, we'll get it started with solder. These are such small light resistors that I'm not really worried about creating all of these bends around the um, around each little uh, tag here. They're really small and light, so. This will be more than good enough to hold them in there for a very long time. 
Beautiful, there we go. We've got our new resistors there. These uh, carbon comps that go across from pins five over to, I believe it's pin one. Yeah, pin one. Uh, those measured fine. So we're gonna keep those and move on. So next, I think we're gonna go ahead and remove this resistor. It was measuring in the 30K range, should be a 27K. And then I know based off of my Vibrolux um, that this is gonna be too, um, too big of a resistor for the bias to be set correctly. On the Vibrolux, I really needed something closer to the 15K range. So we're gonna go ahead and swap this with something more in the 15 to 20K range based off of what I have on me. So let's go ahead and remove that resistor first and then we can go ahead and grab a new one. Okay, let's put this off to the side and grab a new one. So this measures just under 15K. So we're gonna go ahead and try this and then um, if it doesn't bias right, we'll obviously adjust this resistor. But I think that'll probably get us in the sweet spot if I had to guess. So first we'll clean out the eyelets. All right, so we'll redo that obviously once the ground is on there, but we're just trying to give ourselves something to hold the resistor in place so we can get the ground. That should be good. I guess it would be smarter to wait to check the bias, but I think it's going to be I think it's going to be perfect. All right, so next up, we're gonna continue and move down the amp. And we've got some resistors here in the phase inverter area that were quite a ways off. So we're gonna go ahead and try and find very close matched uh, five percenters if I have any. Otherwise, uh, we'll use anything that measures within 5%. All right, let's see what this measures out of circuit. This should be an 82K. Measures 93K, so that puts it just out of tolerance, I would say, for the phase inverter location. So we've got this right here, which is one of my new old stock um, ABs that I had left over from the Vibrolux project. So we're gonna go ahead and install that there. Now, I believe this was a gold band that I sharpied to be a silver band for that project, but uh, either way, this measures dead on, just to confirm. So you can see it measures 81K and it should be 82K. So perfect for this. So we're gonna go ahead and clean out these eyelets and then do a fresh install on that. All right, we got that eyelet clean. Now we gotta do this one. All right, those two are clean. Now we can get our resistor all set up here. So next we have these 220Ks and I'm just realizing it might have been better to just undo this lead right here um, to get this out. But we're going to go ahead and just try and lift it and just see what happens first. Or maybe I'll try and just remove some of the solder first. It's just such a tricky area to reach with the blue molds on either side. There's kind of very much in the way. Actually got a lot more than I thought I would there. Beautiful, let's go ahead and clean these eyelets out now. We can use the wick. All right, let's go ahead and grab our resistors first just to demonstrate how off these were. It should be within 5% of 220K. And it's 
not even close to 5% off of uh off of 220k. So let's go ahead and grab a couple of 5% resistors and install those there. All right, so I got two carbon comps that both measure exactly the same and within 5% of 220. So we're gonna go ahead and install these. All right, resistors are placed. Let's go ahead and solder them in. And just like always, I kind of get the first round in, let it cool while I move on to the next one. And then I come back to try and add a little bit of a dome. I mean, this amp's already had a ton of work to, done to it. Most of the solder joints have been messed with and there's not a dome. It's more just practice, to be honest. Practice for the projects that maybe matter a little bit more. And with me saying it, it's probably worth mentioning that uh, I'm not getting paid uh, to do this. So this is for a bandmate. So we're just trying to get this thing up and running so we can start using it. For the least amount of money possible in free labor. <laughs> All right, so those two 20Ks are done, the 82K is done, so we can mark that off the list. So, to recap, we've done the resistors here on the power tubes, the resistor on the bias pot, the bias, um, bias cap, the 82K, and then both two 20Ks. And let's see what that leaves us with. So those are all done. Let's go ahead and check those off. You know, if this was my amp and the goal is a restoration project, I would do what I did to the Vibrolux and redo all of these solder joints, all of these resistors, but that would take uh, days and that's just not in the cards right now. So more function over form for this one. But of course, I'm trying to do a good job on anything I do touch. 220K and 470K are measuring a little off, um, but I think it's because of the way they're in the circuit. So we're gonna lift a leg and just confirm on that real quick. 400 or 540. That's confusing. Let me take the other lead out just to see what's going on. Did somebody install maybe a 470 when they meant to do, it's a yellow, purple, yellow. Yeah, that is a 470K, yellow, purple, yellow. So either just with that leg connected, it's just reading way off or the resistor is totally off. So let's remove the other leg. Yeah, so it's, oh shoot. I just realized it's M. <laughs> uh, this is one thing that's really annoying about auto ranging multimeters like this is for some reason they will change the, the baseline, you know, the decimal point location. So the other ones I was measuring, it showed, you know, they showed up say as 550K ohms. Well, this is mega ohms. So this 540.549 mega ohms is 549k. But boy, that's annoying. So let's check the 220 now. And that's fine. Okay, so we just need to replace that 470k. There we go. We'll use that one. The new resistor installed. Let's go ahead and add solder.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to go through and probably quickly touch up every one of these solder joints. I'm not gonna have time to really clean them out and start over, but I can actually see this one right here. I don't know if you can see it on your screen or not. Um, it's got a hole in it where the resistor or the cap lead goes to, so that's not great. Yeah, most of these look pretty poor. I'm sure somebody paid good money to have all this work done too since there's so many resistors swapped and all the caps. Saying it kindly, it looks like a rush job. <laughs> okay, so we can mark those off. So the last one right here, this is a 100K, measured 115K. Not major deal, but we're gonna swap it because we're here. And these solder joints look terrible, so might as well. There we go. All right, so I'm not sure where the video ended, but we got the 100K in there and I went through and redid just about every solder joint really quickly. Any, anything that looks slightly suspect, I just decided to redo. So we're gonna go ahead and end there tonight because it's pretty late. And um, yeah, tomorrow I will probably begin working on the doghouse and then we'll do a check, sound check on the amp. But uh, I think we'll end the video here and then we'll save that for the next part. So thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you guys like this comment, content, excuse me, give it a thumbs up. And if you have uh, any suggestions, ideas, or um, yeah, anything, go ahead and drop a comment. So until next time, see ya.